when I was a kid, I remember listening to the sounds of Bob Dylan and Johnny Mitchell, the Beatles, stuff like that. I also was attracted to soundtrack music at an early age. I remember films like Blade Runner. So when I was about 12, 13, I picked up a guitar, started playing, teaching myself tabs and stuff like that, working out the cover songs I liked. And suddenly I realized like, geez, there's, there's something going on here that I really want to get into. And I just became absorbed by it. And when I was 16, I was like, no, this is, this is it. This is what I want to do. I just want to play bass. When I was 18, I found a really cheap double bass. I wanted to check it out and get into it because I was listening to all this jazz. And the electric bass thing was still my love, but the double bass seemed like an interesting thing to pursue and do as a second instrument. And then when I went to UCT, I still didn't feel very confident on double bass, so I did the, the course on electric bass. All the while, I, I continued to teach myself double bass, so I still haven't been for a proper double bass lesson, really. <laughs> People started to book me more and more for double bass. Um, eventually it became the only thing people wanted me to play and slowly but surely the electric bass became second fiddle. The first thing I love about bass, you're kind of in the engine of the car. You, um, you're like a wave. Any, anything like a saxophone or a guitar that's the lead instrument, they're, they're kind of surfing on this wave. But for the drums and bass, you're the wave behind it and you're pushing and the wave it can go, it can change shape, it moves. It, and, the lead instrument has to react to that. And then being on double bass, it has this huge amount of character and, and variety of sounds that you can get out of one note. It sounds like a human voice, but like a deep bass singer singing. And there's a lot of room for error within that, but that's kind of the excitement of it as well. As Carlo Mombelli says, if you, can, if you can play on the edge of wrong, there's a certain kind of magic that happens there as opposed to just keeping it safe. What happens for me is when, when the music really gets going and the band connects, there becomes this like huge bubble of energy on stage that you're a part of. And if you get it right, that bubble expands and includes the entire audience. And you can feel that as soon as it does because people start cheering when they get moved emotionally. You can instantly feel when the audience is in there with you. It's difficult. Um, these days to get any sort of money out of a record label or support to produce an album or to get press, um, publicity and things like that. So getting an award like this really does the job of, of a label and in a lot of ways. Being able to produce an album, um, getting publicity from it. So just having a little bit of support like this from, from Standard Bank, it's really great. It's really fantastic. I'm very happy to have it. and. Um, I think it's a wonderful initiative that they're, they're, they're doing this for so many artists in different fields. I've played at Grahamstown at the festival for many years now with different groups, mostly as a sideman. Um, so I know the environment there and the, the buzz that you get from the audience and from the students and, and the whole thing that's happening there is really extraordinary. It's, I've never experienced that same thing at any other jazz festival in the world. It's a really unique environment. I'm really excited to be the front or the the, the leader of the project this time and bring my own music to the guys and say, hey, this is all my stuff that I've written, check it out. Um, it's just, it's a joy being there every year. So, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it.